بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد بريفلي بإذن الله تعالى كويك فائدة إن شاء الله from the جامع of Imam Al-Bukhari رحمه الله he says in كتاب الجمعة <تصفيق> باب فضل الغسل يوم الجمعة وهل على الصبي شهود يوم الجمعة أو على النساء حدثنا عبد الله بن يوسف قال أخبرنا مالك عن نافع عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا جاء أحدكم الجمعة فليغتصب حدثنا عبد الله بن محمد بن أسماء قال أخبرنا جويري عن مالك عن الزهري عن سالم بن عبد الله ابن عمر عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن عمر الخطاب بينهما هو قائم في الخطمة يوم الجمعة إذ دخل رجل من المهاجرين الأولين من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فناداه عمر أية ساعة هذه قال إني شكلت فلم أنقلب إلى أهلي حتى سمعت التأذين أو التأذين فلم أزد أن توضأت فقال والوضوء أيضا وقد علمت أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يأمر بالغصن حدثنا عبد الله بن يوسف قال أخبرنا مالك عن صفوان بن سليم عن عطاء بن يسار عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال غسل يوم الجمعة واجب على كل محترم إمام البخاري has a chapter on الجمعة and in this chapter he has a heading that says فضل الغسل يوم الجمعة the virtue and the excellence of taking the ritual bath or ritual shower for الجمعة the excellence of doing this that is the excellent and virtuous thing and then he says, وَهَلْ عَلَى الصَّبِي شُهُودِ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ أَوْ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ He says, do children have to come to Jum'ah? And are women required to come to Jum'ah? So he tells you something, and then he poses or throws two questions at you. And this is from the unique style of Imam al-Bukhari. He gives you a fa'idah, and then he asks you for two fa'idahs, as we often do in the classes. He gives, and then he requests. The virtue of Jum'ah, and then he brings up a fiqh issue. Is it mandatory for young people to come to Jum'ah? Is it obligatory for women to come to Jum'ah? And if it is, why? And if it isn't, why not? Etc. He then quotes with his Isnad, hadith number 877, reported by Ibn Umar, that the Messenger of Allah said, إِذَا جَاءَ أَحْدُكُمْ He says, when one of you comes to Jum'ah, when one of you wishes to go to Jum'ah, then he should wash. He should make the ghusl. And then he quotes the hadith of Umar al-Khattab with Uthman ibn Affan. And he also quotes the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri in which he states that Jum'ah or the washing for Jum'ah is mandatory upon everyone who's muhtalan. Someone who's had a wet dream, quote-unquote, of age. So, right now, we don't want to discuss this specific chapter heading. The women, children have to come. We don't want to discuss the issue of Jum'ah. Is it mandatory to wash for it or not? Three main views of the fuqaha. The first is, is that it's mandatory. It's mandatory for anyone who's coming to Jum'ah. Man, woman, anyone who's going to come, huh? he must make the ghusl. The second madhab is that it's what? Recommended. And the third madhab is mandatory for those who have jobs and occupations in which they sweat and perspire. And they may smell, they may harm huh, from toiling, from working, then it's mandatory for them to wash, and if not, then no. Three main views. So we're not here to discuss the issue, is it mandatory or not? What we want to talk about is a side branch of the concept of ghusl of Jum'ah. And that is, when do you make your ghusl? When is it first and foremost valid? Secondly, when is it most preferable? Understand clearly. If you hold the view that it's mandatory to make the ghusl for Jum'ah, when is it sufficient time for you to do it and it's counted for Jum'ah? Is it after Maghrib on Thursday? Is it before Fajr on Jum'ah? Is it after Fajr on Jum'ah? Or is it an, uh, an, uh, yani a mandatory obligation to wash before you go to the masjid? With the intention of going to the masjid. Which of the three? Everybody understand this? Which of the three? And it's very important to understand the basis. And the, that which branches off from the foundation, the basis, the asl. So once again, will it matter different on it being mandatory or not? None of them differ over it being a good virtuous act. No one says that it's a bad thing to wash for Jum'ah. They all unanimously say that it's a good thing to do, to make a ghusl. Some say it's fard, and others say it's just sunnah. We're not here to discuss which of those views is strongest. The sunnah clearly tells you to wash, to put on 
nice things, brush your teeth, perfume yourself, etc. But the question is now, when is it time, Saladin, for you to make the ghusl? When is it valid, just like the Eid? When can you give zakat al-fitr? We know there's a preferable time, but when is the bare minimum? And when is the maximum? When is the latest that you can give zakat al-fitr? Everybody understand this? When is the latest? What's the last piece of time that is valid and sufficient to give? And when is the what? When is the earliest? Everybody understand this? So this is the issue that we want to deal with right here, being like subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not necessarily uh, the chapter heading of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. Khayran, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everybody understand this, uh, huh? The issue here is when is it what? When is it what? When is it preferable? Everybody clear on this? Khayran, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving forward. What we want to discuss, bi idhni ta'ala, is what the ulama say regarding going to Juma. What do you say, Abdul Wadud? When should someone take the ghusl? So it's invalid to make it in the morning. You can't make ghusl after Fajr? For Juma? Not just to wash up to be clean, not for Janaba, but the specific ghusl with the niya of Juma. If you have, uh, I guess, some errands to run prior to you or you be outside, and you can make ghusl. So it's valid to do it in the morning. Yeah. Sharif. Uh, after Fajr. After Fajr is valid. Mm -hmm. Even if it's five, six hours after. No. You may go back to sleep. You may sweat. You may do this. You may break your wudu, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. When is it best? Before you go to the masjid. Before you go to the masjid. That's what I mean. As soon as the, the latest that you can make it. The latest, huh? You can make it right before the masjid. Obviously, in traffic, traveling, handling your business, getting from your house to the masjid. Don't make it too early, in other words. Why do you say that? Because we know that it's best to make it as close to the... Why? That's what we want to know. You can't, you can't prove khilaf with khilaf. This is very important here, which many people do. You can't prove huh, something on something that's... Because you don't want it necessary. They differ. Everybody understand this? You can't prove something that's con huh? You want to state your view on a controversial issue, and you bring a delay that's what? You gotta bring something that's agreed upon to stomp out and to stamp out the controversy. Everybody understand this? It's very important here. If it's khilaf, you bring something that's what? Iowa agreed upon to get rid of that. You can't bring something in which there is. Follow what I mean. I mean, we know that we're, we're told to make the kushu before we make the intention to go to the jumma. So it's reasonable to think that you can make intention to go Based to off of what we read. But yeah. It doesn't say that. It says, Yawmil Juma. Men ata minkum al Juma. He who comes to Juma. He who goes to Juma. Everybody understand this? The, the whole entire day is called what? Yawmil Juma. Even rather, to make things even more confusing, somebody may say you can make a ghusl after Asr, before Maghrib, because that's all considered? Juma. So which one is correct? Two, two stages, I mean. Stay with me. The first is, when is it permissible? When is it valid? And then secondly, when is it what? Best. Tfaddle, yes, yes. explain to us your method and why. Um, based on what we're reading here, I would say that it's because they're saying when one comes to Juma. So right. Because they're using the word comes to Juma, we have to, you know, um, we're, we're taking from that that they're actually now have made the intention and they actually, in the, they actually started doing the act of worship of actually going to Jumu'ah. Alright, so here now the actual concept of men etta, he who goes to Jumu'ah. So the ghusl should be connected with the action of what? Going to Jumu'ah. Moving. That's one reason, one way of reasoning. What else? I'm halfway convinced. Think about what's the hikmah of ghusl of Jumu'ah? Clean yourself. You say Spiritual. clean yourself. Spiritual. Spiritual. Impurity? This is very important now. Very pay close attention. Ghusl has two has three reasons why you make a ghusl in Islam. Huh? The first is to do what? Just to clean. Just to clean. Clean yourself. Physical purity. Number two is what? Spiritual impurity. Janaba or Hayu. The menses or sexual intercourse. Nam? And the third reason is what? No. What's the third reason why you make a ghusl in Islam? I'm not Junub. I'm not dirty. 
Recommendation. Pure spirituality. Pure. And there's no impurities at all. Yeah. I have my wudu, I, but I'm making a ghusl for Eid. I'm making ghusl for what? Juma. For Juma. I'm making ghusl just for the class. Everybody understand this? So Juma is of which of those three? The last one. The last one. Okay, tight. <laughs> you finished up with me? Anybody else? What do you think, Yusuf? You agree with what I mean? So is it valid to make it in the morning or not? Yeah. It's valid, but best to make it when you're 11 a.m., 10.30, depending on what time you plan to get at the masjid. You want a cow? You want a camel? Naam, a bull, a ram, a chicken, an egg? Right. Some brothers, they come after the khatib starts the khutbah. Most people, many. So depending on what time you want to get to the, the khutbah, how early, depending on when you make the what? Ghusl. So let's say hypothetically speaking, I want to get to the masjid at 11 a.m. <coughs> the khutbah is at 1. Based off of this hadith, you have to organize your time and make ghusl at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10.30, depending on how far you are from the what? Masjid. From the masjid. And also, are you going to walk to the masjid? Are you going to run to the masjid? Are you going to ride a bicycle? Is it hot outside? Is it cold outside? Fiqh, fiddin. Everybody says what? Fiqh Vidin, understanding of what to do and how to do it. Khair, inshallah. Let's take some fawaid from Fatah al-Bari. Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says regarding this hadith uh, and some of the, uh, the, the, the benefits, he says here, Al-Hadith udaliruna ala ta'aliq al-amri bil-ghusli bil-maji ila al-jum'ah wa istadalla bihi malikun fi annahu yu'tabaru an yakuna al-ghusli mutasinan bil-dhahab wa wafaquhu al-awza'iyu wal-layth wal-jumhuru qalu yurzi'u min ba'd al-fajr ويشهد لهم حديث ابن عباس الآتي قريبا وقال الأثرم سميت أحمد سئل عمن اغتسل ثم أحدث هل يكفيه الوضوء فقال نعم ولم أسمع فيه أعلى من حديث ابن أبزة يشير إلى ما أخرج ابن بشيبة بإسناد صحيح عن سعيد بن عبد الرحمن بن أبزة عن نبي وله الصحبة أنه كان يغتسل يوم الجمعة ثم يحدث فيتوضأ ولا يعيد الغسل ومقتضى النظر أن يقال إذا عرف أن الحكمة في الأمر بالغسل يوم الجمعة والتنظيف ورعاية الحاضرين من التأذى بالرائحة الكريهة فمن خشي أن يصيبه في أثناء النهار ما يزيل تنظيفة استحب له أن يؤخر الغسل لوقت ذهابه ولعل هذا هو الذي لاحظه مالك فاشترط اتصال الذهاب بالغسل ليحصل الأمن مما يغير تنظيف والله أعلم He says here that Imam Malik or he says this hadith first and foremost teaches us number one is that Jumu'ah the prayer, the khutbah, and the ghusl, he says, the ta'liq, they're connected. That they're what? They're connected. And it's not just the day, but it's the actual sermon and the prayer. That they're what? Connected. The ghusl is connected to the service. Everybody understand this? To the what? To the service. And this is why some ulama, such as Imam Malik, they said that you must make the ghusl when you intend to go. And not early in the morning. That you have to, and you should make the ghusl win, only with the intention of going. As it states in the hadith, man ata, man raha, he who travels in the first hour, in the second hour. Everybody understand this? Man ightasara, ha, yawm al jum'ati, ghusl al janaba, ghusl al janaba. The hadith of Abi Huraira, man ghasala wa ghtasala. He says, he who washes like janaba, and that's an, an issue in itself. What's meant by that hadith? He who makes the ghusl on Jum'ah like Janaba. What's important is, Malik says, is that you have to make the ghusl win when you're going. So not after Fajr, not for the Adhan, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Whenever you plan to go, then you make the what? You make the ghusl. Everybody doing this? And other ulama, most of them, they say it's valid to make the ghusl after Fajr. After what? After the Fajr. What's meant by after Fajr? What's meant by after Fajr? After the sun rises. After the sun rises. What do you, you think, Imran? After you finish prayer. After you finish prayer. In the specific after time. The, I mean, like when so what do you think? When What's meant by after Fajr? The, the time between the, at the, the completion of the Fajr prayer and Zohar. La. So the What's meant by after Fajr is when the Fajr comes in. When the Fajr what? When the Fajr comes in. Whether it's through your vision, whether it's through the prayer table, that's what's meant that Dukhul al Fajr, Ba'd al Fajr. After Fajr is what? Is in. So, in other words, hypothetically speaking, a person says, I need to take a nap, I need to study, I need to go here, whatever. I believe that Juma is mandatory. So, a person who says, I'm going to make my ghusl before I make Salat al Fajr. 
It's, salat comes in 544, methanin, hypothetically speaking. The is at 615. So he's not that far from the masjid. He makes his ghusl 545. Washes, dries, he put on his socks and everything, and then he goes to the masjid for fajr. Or he has something else to do. Based off of that, this juma, the ghusl will be what? Valid. Valid. And he doesn't have to do it like Imam Malik said when he's what? Going. Everybody clear on this? He then explains the wisdom behind the Juma, and that is the hadith of Ibn Abbas, in which the Messenger of Allah said to some of the Sahaba that were working. Some of them were carpenters, some of them were craftsmen, and they were sweating. It was hot. And he says, He says, If you would only wash for this day. In other words, they, they smelt. They were men, they were working hard. So they say, This is the hikmah of the ghusl of Juma, is to be clean, is to be fresh, is to smell nice, and to look good. So if that is the wisdom behind it, then it only makes sense to make the ghusl when you're going to the masjid, especially if you're going to do something which you're going to sweat and be dirty. Everybody understand this? Last but not least is, if you make ghusl in the morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., not 5 a.m., that's too early, so that's before the fajr, is it, do you have to make another ghusl before you go to Juma, or is it sufficient to make wudu? In other words, if you make ghusl at 7 a.m., from 7 to 12, 12, 30, it's a big possibility you're going to break your wudu. When you use the bathroom, you want to pass one, etc. So you have to make another ghusl, or is it sufficient to just make the wudu? It depends. It depends. Yeah. If you're a person working out like in the street, right? Then it's, you're going against the wisdom, so... Then you have to make a ghusl. But, but if you're not, like you're just a regular person, maybe you did it after the fudger, correct, whatever, and you're still fine, then... Taib. So what about wiping over the socks? Can you wipe over your socks at 12 a.m.? I made a ghusl at 6 a.m. or 5.45 a.m. I put on my socks after I made ghusl. Can I wipe over my socks at 12 p.m.? Yes. You can? Yes. How, why? How can you? What's the ghusl of Jumu'ah? What is the ghusl of Jumu'ah? It's a very important question. What's the ghusl of Jumu'ah? Spiritual. Ritual, ritual impurity or just ritual bath? So what is the ghusl of Jum'ah then? In other words, I just wash up. That's it. No will do, no nothing. That's the ghusl of what? Jum'ah. I make ghusl for Janaba, different story. The ghusl of Janaba, I have wudu after I finish my ghusl of Janaba. As long as you don't touch your private part afterwards. Everybody understand this? I just take a shower that's not what? That doesn't include wudu. And the, the ghusl of Jum'ah is initially what? Just a what? Just a shower. You're not Junub. You may have wudu, but you're doing it just to implement the statement of the Prophet. So if you make the ghusl of Juma, make sure that you make what? In the ghusl. Everybody understand this? Everybody clear on this? Hadha wa Allah wa alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. Ala abdi yusul wa alayhi wa sallam. What's your question, Abdul Wadu? I was going to ask in relation to the sunnahs of uh, after the uh, the two raka or the four, like, which, what's the, uh, the reward for doing the four? And is it the same as the doing the two? Obviously, it's going to be more of a reward. It's more ajr. Okay. You don't want to come a more complete act of ibadah. Okay. Two is valid. Okay. According to those narrations that say four, that's even better. Okay. So if you have the ability to make four, okay. that's what you should do. Is it if there's not enough time, at least two. Is it linked to a particular benefit? Like so In general, the prayers, the rawatib, sunnah and rawatib, the prayers that you make before and afterwards, as Umm Habib narrated, huh? he says, Man hafada ala thinte ashrat raka, he who constantly makes 12 extra units of prayer on a day, ben Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah, aw kama qal alayhi salatu salam, Allah will build for him a house in paradise. And most importantly is that the sunnah and rawatib, the prayers you make before and after the five daily prayers, that's your insurance plan that keeps you safe. You were playing around in a salat. You were a little late. You didn't make it in congregation. You made it just before the time. You were fit. That cleans your salat up. That overlaps, that covers any shortcomings that you have. What? In the salat. And the five daily prayers. We all know the virtues of the five daily prayers. Allah says, قَدْ أَفْرَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The believers are successful, those who are steadfast, submissive, and they have concentration in their prayers. Then Allah mentions many different things. Allah talks about lowering the, the, the gaze, the, the, the hafilud, protecting the chastity, giving zakah, 
turning away from foul speech, and at the end of all of those characteristics, protecting your amana, wa ahdihim ra'un, Allah speaks on, waladina hum ala salawatihim yuhafidun. Those who strictly guard the prayers. So Allah begin with the salah, and he ended with what? Salah. With the salah. And then he said about these believers, ulaikahum al warithun. They who those who inherit Jannatul Firdos, whom fiha khalidun, which they will dwell forever. So that's the general virtue of the five daily prayers. So anything that's keeping those prayers intact, solid, is going to be a part of that virtue. Wallahu the, the two. You asked the one question. You said I had one question. <laughs> that's all you said. You did. You said you have a question after. Question, not questions. <laughs>